So um, I had a look at uh, at um, one of these rants that I, well, my sister says they're not rants, but anyway, um, I had a look at one of these pieces that I had on Instagram a couple of days ago. And um, I, I found myself, I, I caught myself saying that um, I acknowledge or recognize my roots, where I come from, my um, my demographic, my my uh, what's it called, my ethnicity, um, and and I said that you know in the in the process of reading up on and understanding and encountering the effects of what my uh, civilization did as a civilization, not personally, but as a as a so called civilization did um provoked me to to uh feel that i was i identified much more with the colonized than with the colonizer now I, a lot of these arguments all come down to um uh people looking at you like well you must hate yourself uh you know if you if you if you question or doubt or or the doubt the integrity and the the essential goodness of what the British Empire did and its effect on the world, that you must have some sort of self loathing and um, you know whoever thinks that way, let me put your mind at rest it's exactly the opposite. The person who loves themselves has no need to identify with ridiculous things like monarchs, crowns, anthems, flags, and the supposed achievements of people who came before him or her. Now, I understand the, the notion of ancestors, and I, I respect that, but I think that's a rather different, a, a rather different um, monster. The respect for ancestry is is a sort of recognition that I had when my father passed that um, I had been living with some tension throughout my life with a father who I um, came to respect eventually as a sort of as as a Ulysses, and suddenly I recognized who he was and and what he meant and and his influence upon me through that very uh, window, the, the classical window. So uh, just lay, set your mind at ease that it has, you know, that the need for somebody to say, well, I am British and I am part of this Labour Party or Tory Party and I, you know, like the wonderful Rory, um, gosh, what's his name? The uh, podcaster. Anyway. Uh, Rory <laughs> says about you know being a being a Tory. Rory the Tory is that he he respects the traditions and all that sort of stuff. And I go okay, I I can look at that. I can't identify with it. I can't. I'm not straight laced, not stiff upper lip. I'm just not like that. And when I as a child, when I was moving around, you know, in the Middle East as a kid probably too early to actually consciously remember, or when I was moving around in, certainly in the West Indies, what I found was that I was absolutely stunned by the culture, that, by the culture and by the society I was in. Now, there was, particularly in Trinidad, there was a, a, um, an imperative. I lived amongst white people and there was a certain um, looking down upon a certain condescension about the African and the East Indian communities there. But uh, my father and mother actually resisted that. And as a child, even then, I was sort of um, mystified in that good way, in that sort of way of mystery by these people by the people I encountered. Um, and that didn't change. And I guess maybe because there's an age when especially boys are, um, they're asked to make judgments. <laughs> I 
I really don't know where that comes from, but it seems to come and it seems to dominate the male world, particularly judgments. I, I judge, therefore I am. And, um, you know, if, if, if you're basing your worldview on your judgments, you will find yourself, in order to feel good about yourself, your identity, you will find yourself denigrating anything that doesn't look like you, probably by nature. And then you will convince yourself that you are being rational and unsubjective, you're being objective. And so objectively, you know, the great civilizations of Europe were the inevitable ones, they were the superior ones, they had the superior arms, they had the superior religions and all that sort of stuff. And as I've gone into before, this is mostly need. There's no basis in fact, you know, there's nothing either good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. Why, then it is none to you. You know what I mean? It's like, if you need to believe those things, you will. And you will go to university, or wherever it is that you go. You will go to your various authoritarians, and you will find the, the books and the passages in the books. You know, you'll find the Kiplings, and you'll find the, 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 the um, what's that one, Jack, the Jack Londons. You will find all those people who make those judgments about those other civilizations and you will adopt them because you need to. That's all. So my own situation was lucky, as I keep insisting, and rare, probably, I don't know, certainly amongst men, that um, as, I, as I burst upon the world in my youth, and looked around, I was just fascinated, fascinated by what was going on. I find that, you know, being a political animal and being very critical of the reputation of my, 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 my civilization, looking at it with a very jaundiced eye, um, still I have to look at it and find it marvelous even what remains, even what remains in wasp culture, in which I have bathed for many years, it's, there's, there's always this relentless glow of something quite marvelous about human beings, despite themselves, despite the ridiculous narratives that they come up with. So anyway, I just wanted to clarify that. And uh, those of you who who find this, this um, you know, whoever you imagine is self-hating, whether they're African-Americans or Jews or whatever it is, you need to be very careful um, because it's not grounded on anything. It has more to do with you than them.